Welcome to the West Cork Crochet Channel and welcome to the Tapestry Tank Top. I got a wee bit hooked on creating little tapestry characters, so here's one of three released today. All three are suitable for kids of all ages, and in this video I show you how to make up two options. Check the description box for information on the written pattern. Any yarn recommending a 4mm hook will create a similar result. I used a 3mm hook. I also used a tape measure and a yarn needle. If you're not following the written pattern, you may also need a pen and paper just to jot down any details of colour changes. If you like this one, do send that message to YouTube by tapping the thumbs up button. For future projects, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. You can now also follow me on Instagram. Today I'm having a go at a little tapestry crochet, creating this little guy, which I then turned into a sweater vest. It starts with the panel with a little character on it. It's just this width of panel. It's 32 stitches along and it's worked up in double crochet. So I first had to work out where he was going to go and I wanted to centre him height-wise. So I worked up a little swatch in my chosen yarn, in my chosen hook size. For me, I find that the, tap the tapestry crochet works best with one millimetre less than your yarn recommends. So you want a slightly tighter stitch to cover up the yarn that you're carrying behind on your work. So I went for a three millimetre hook with a four millimetre, well, a yarn that recommended four millimetres. So I worked up a little swatch so I could then calculate how many rows I needed to build my width, my, my height, sorry. For me, it was 22 rows. This guy takes up eight. So eight minus 22 is 14. So I needed seven rows to start, eight for the little guy, seven rows to finish. Starting out with my three millimeter hook and a chain of 33. I have 33 chains. I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. If you don't want to work the standing double, chain an extra two the first three chains and then your replacement double crochet. For me, I'm just going to turn the chain over. I'm going to work into the back bump. I'm going to give my loop a twist just to pull up to the height of a double crochet, twist it once, twist it around my hook holding onto the loop, in through the stitch. Pull back a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the second two loops. And that's my standing double. As I say, or you can chain two, and your first three is your double crochet. Into the next stitch, double crochet, and into every stitch after that. I'm working the back bumps, as I say, the whole way along. That's row one. I'm going to work seven rows in total to center my design. So I'm going to work another standing double to start the row. I'm already getting the twist to the loop because I've turned direction. So I just wrap the loop around the hook, holding on, in through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, or chain three. I'm just going to work my seven rows that I need to centre the design. And I'll be back. That's my seven starting rows to build up my height. And now I'm onto the actual pattern. For the first row, pattern calls for six double crochet in my base colour. I'm going to work five and I'll be back. There's five. I start number six and I work it to this point where I have the two loops remaining on my hook. At this point I grab my next colour, which for me is purple. And I'm going to pull through the loop and finish this stitch in the purple. Now I need to do three stitches in the purple. So what I'm going to do is carry this blue along with me. So if you're weaving tail ends as you go, this is the same procedure. So you just need to make sure that this yarn, the blue, is between the stitch and your new yarn. 
So, yarn over for double crochet. In through the stitch, I'm going to use the back loop only because it's purple on blue and I like to leave just a little barrier of the front loop. It makes it look a little less dramatic. So, sandwiching the blue yarn within the stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to finish that stitch. Next one, I'm going in through the back loop again, sandwiching my blue yarn and finish the double crochet. And you'll see the blue's coming along with me and it's in the next position. Third stitch, yeah, around I go. And I get to this point and I need to change colour again. I'm going to drop the purple, pick the blue up around the back and finish that stitch in the blue. Now at this point I'm going to carry the purple and work my blue stitches. And I'm going to work 15 blue stitches. I'm actually going to work 14 and I'll be back. So in through both loops now because I'm blue on blue so it doesn't matter. Sandwiching the purple and finishing my stitch. Just pull that tight and it disappears. So I'll work 14 and I'll see you then. There's my 14 blue, carried the purple the whole way across. I go in for number 15 and I work it to the last two loops and get ready for the purple change. Before I work the purple change, I just want to make sure that my carried yarn is good and taut. So it's, if it's baggy, you can see the other colour through the other one. So what I do is I pinch my last purple stitch and just give that a tighten up just to remove the slack. I'm not pulling it so that it puckers my work. I'm just taking off any slack and it just makes it tidier there at the back and, and pulls that into place. And it's less visible then on the front. So I can then come up around the back and change to purple. I'm then going to work three stitches in purple. Back loop because I'm going purple on blue. That's one, carrying the blue, two, and most of three. To there. Drop the purple, pick up the blue, just give that a little tighten, and pull through to finish. At this point I'm going to leave the purple where it is because I don't need it any further on. The next row in the purple is going to start here, so it's further than the last stitches I've just worked. So I'm just going to work six stitches now to finish this row in the blue. At the end of that row, this is what I have. I have two little purple stumps and the rest in blue. And at the back, you can see that my purple is just trailing there where I left it. So for the next row, I calls for nine to start in the blue. So I'm going to work six and then I'll be back. So I've worked six of my nine stitches and I know that the next purple stitch is going to start here. So I need to carry this purple up and across these three stitches to get it into place. I'm also going blue on purple, so I want to leave my front loop empty. I'm at the back of my work, so I'm going to work the front loop whilst picking up this loop. So yarn over and purple over. I'm going to go into the stitch and work my double. Same again, yarn over, purple over as well, in through the stitch, and work the double. Last one, front loop, to there. At this point, I'm just going to take off the slack and swatch, switch colour again. So I'm going through the purple for that last two loops. I now need to do three purple. 
So I'm actually looking at a chart because I have a chart off camera to tell me which colours go where. So I'm going purple on top of blue. So again, I'm going front loop to leave the, what is the actual front loop on the front empty. I'm carrying the blue. And that's stitch number one. Number two, same thing, carrying the blue. And number three, to there. And here, drop the purple, finish in the blue to make sure that it's nice and tidy. Finish in the blue. That's what it looks like now from the front. Onto the back still. I now need to work nine more stitches in the blue whilst carrying the purple. So I'm blue on blue, I can use both loops. And I just work my nine stitches carrying the purple. That's eight of my nine. Prepare to work the ninth. Stop there. Up with the purple. Take off the slack. Oops, there's quite a lot, it turns out. And finish the stitch in the purple. I'm now going to work three purple stitches carrying the blue. So in through the front loop because I'm going purple and blue. One. Two. And most of the third. Stop there. Switch to blue. And finish the stitch. Okay, my plan tells me that my next purple colour is directly above, so I don't need to take that any further. Just leave it in the back of my work, which is the front in this instance, because I'm just currently working on the back. You can see where the tail end is, this is the back. So I'm going to work my blue rows right to the end and then all the way back again. Blue stitches, sorry. I'm going to go front loop for the first three because I'm going over purple. And then the remaining six. And then I come back with nine blue double crochets. So I'm onto my ninth stitch. I've just left the last two loops on my hook. Pick up my purple and pull up through to finish that stitch. And now I need to work nine purple stitches. The first three I'm over purple so I can go through both loops carrying the blue. Up to here, I need to go back loop only because I'm at the front of my work. I'm going purple on blue. And then for the last three, I can go both loops, purple on purple. On my last stitch, I'm just going to finish that off in the blue. Just give that a tug first before I do so, make sure I've tightened it all up. Now the next purple stitch is needed three stitches along the next row up. So I'm going to carry this purple along for three stitches with the blue. So that's one, two, three, four, and the third one. At this point, I can leave it there at the back. It needs to be at the back, not at the front. And then carry on to the end of the row. At the end of the row, I'll turn around and I will work six in the blue, preparing to change colour again on the sixth stitch. I'm on my sixth stitch. 
And I've got to this point where I've got the two loops still. Picked up the purple, finish up that stitch. It's just going to trail up, but this is the back, so nothing visible on the front. Next, I'm going to work 21 stitches in the purple, carrying the blue. So I'm on the back, so I'm going to work front loops for the first three, purple and blue. Then I go two loops for the purple section and end with three over the blue. So again, I'd be going front loop. That's my third over blue. And now I'm just onto purple. So both loops carrying blue. All the way to here, where I'll work three more front loops. Here are my last purple stitch. Finishing it up in the blue, just making sure that I've got that nice and tight. And again, my chart tells me that the next purple stitch starts three stitches across. So I need to take this purple with me for three stitches. And then just leave it there in the back where the tail end is. So it's the front here because I'm working on the back, but it needs to be on whichever side is the back side of your work. Last three stitches in the blue, turn around and work three on the next row in the blue. So I've started the next row with my three double crochets in the blue with the last two loops on from my third stitch. The next row is actually quite busy for colour change, so stick with me. I'm going to finish this last stitch in the purple, pulling up from behind. I'm going to work three back loops because I'm on the front, three back loop stitches in the purple because I'm going purple over blue, So I'm going to work six more purple, carrying the blue as usual, but I'm purple on purple so I can use both loops. Got nine in the purple, just on the last stitch as usual for the colour change. And here I'm going to do three blue, three purple, three blue. So same situation as always. I'm on back loops because I'm on blue on purple. That's one. Work two. Work most of three. And then swap my colour. Same again for the purple for three, blue for three. Back to purple for nine, three blue at the end and at this point I can leave the purple where it lays because it's not going any further than that point. So at the end of that row I've worked three blue, nine purple, three, 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 nine and three. I'm going to turn around and work three in the blue. Change into my purple on the third stitch and I need to work three purple, three blue and then back to purple. Now 
work the colour change to the purple and I'm going to work 15 purple stitches which will bring me to here. On my last purple stitch, last two loops, I worked across the blue in the front loops because I'm at the back of my work. So up with the blue. To finish the stitch. And then, actually I didn't tighten off my blue so I'll just back up a little bit. To there. Just make sure that my blue carry is nice and tight leaving no slack okay finish off the stitch and then i need to do three in the blue back to three in the purple finish it with three in the blue leaving the purple where it is on the last stitch so front loop because i'm going blue over purple for my three Swap to purple for three, swap back to blue for three, leaving the purple where it is. So at the end of that row, this is what we're looking like. He's coming along nicely. Next row, I'm going to work three blue, three purple, six blue, nine purple, six blue, three purple, three blue. I'll just run that one more time. Three blue. 3 purple, 6 blue, 9 purple, 6 blue, 3 purple, 3 blue. I'll be back when I've done. For the final row, I'm going to work 9 in the blue, 3 in the purple, 9 in the blue, 3 in the purple, 9 in the blue. But I just remember, need to remember to carry the purple across to here where it starts with the three then i'll work the blue and carry the purple across with me work my purple here then i can leave it be finish off in the blue so here i've worked my three blue i'm going blue over purple i'm on the back so i'm going front loops and i'm just taking that purple loop along with me for the next six stitches. At that point, I'm purple. One, two, and three. Then I'm blue, back to purple, finishing in blue. And there's my finished monster. I just need to add on my seven rows of double crochet to build up the height and I'm done. So the purple now can just be tied off in the back and weaved in. I've worked my seven rows to complete the height of my panel and there he is. I just need to now work on adding the rest of it at the top. So when you've finished your tapestry crochet you will notice little glimpses of the colour that you're trailing behind. Um, but overall the image comes through and it's, uh, so don't obsess over that, you are going to see little glimpses, especially if you're using strong colours. So moving on, whoops, there we go. I'm going to work outwards to form the top onto this panel now. And to start that, I'm going to work a row of single crochet down the edge. So for every double crochet, I'm going to put two stitches. So first I'm going to train one. And I'm going to aim for the centre of the stitch and just put two single crochets in the same spot. Next stitch, aim for the centre and two single crochets. Make sure you're picking up a couple of loops each time so you've got a good strong hold and you're not just stretching on one strand or one piece of yarn. So all the way down two stitches in the side of each double crochet and meet you at the bottom. At this point you'll probably notice that the character has either changed or at least the colour of the character has changed 
That's because this is part of a compilation of three, I think, videos. And uh, this part from here on is the same for all three. So there's no point filming it three different times. I'm just going to film it the ones with this guy. So I've gone all the way down the edge with a row of single crochet, slip stitch into the very bottom stitch just to anchor that to the corner. I've actually had to change yarn and reattach because I've run out of glue. So from where you left off, you haven't run out of yarn. I'm just going to work a row of double crochet all the way up the stitches that I've just worked. So for me, starting in the very bottom corner, not into the slip stitch that you've just anchored to. So into the first actual stitch. Oops, I just let go of my loop, that's bad. And double crochet. Or you can chain three. And then I'm going to put one double crochet into every stitch, all the way up. To the top. That's row one, double crochets. I had 22 rows from my monster panel, which gave me 44 single crochet stitches at the edge. So I've got, I've got 44 double crochets. Just make sure you don't work your slip stitch at the bottom or you chain one at the top, otherwise you'll start to distort, you'll have too many stitches. Next row is just going to be chain one to turn and work single crochet all the way down. row two the single crochet row i'm going to go back to double crochet and then single back down so just alternating between those two rows until this comes out to where a strap would sit a bra strap or a vest strap so me measure from the center of your body the center of your chest over to where a bra or vest strap would sit that's where you need to work to with your alternating rows i'm going to do another Double row, another single row, and then another double row, and then we're back. If I'm working towards a closer fit, I would typically deduct three centimetres from my measurements for both the front and back panels to allow for stretch. In this instance, for the front panel, that would be 1.5 centimetres from each side of the tapestry section. So I'd actually deduct 0.75 centimetres before and after the strap just to make sure that I don't lose the intended position of the strap once the fabric is stretched. As you'll see later on this particular project, I've opted to make all of my deductions in width from the center portion of the back panel. So the back panel is six centimeters narrower than the front. And this was to alleviate stretch um, on the front of the top, which could have potentially distorted my little tapestry character. Okay, I'm back. I've gone double single, double single, double. So I've worked all the way up with my double crochet row. And this row is now going to continue up for my strap. And the strap is literally just a row of double crochet. So I have two options. I'm going to go with option two. But the first one is to attach some yarn into the bottom of this stitch and chain out. And then you can just keep working your double crochets up the chain. I'm actually just going to work a foundation row where you're literally creating the chain and the double crochets at the same time. To do that, I yarn over, insert my hook into the same bottom stitch, bottom of the stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop only. That is now my chain, the equivalent of. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two for double crochet. So for the second one, I yarn over into that first pair of loops that I created. The bit that I said is now the chain. I go through both loops from there. Yarn over, pull through a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. And that is now the chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So yet again, spin through those two loops, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, that's now the chain, pull through two, 
pull through two. And that one's grab hold of that one each time you go, and then it reminds you where it is. But if you just look at the bottom now, I've developed one, two, three chains, and one, two, three stitches. I'm going to keep doing that until I've got 22. Then I'll chain up one at the end and cut. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail to join the straps at the top. And back, there's my strap. And with the foundation stitches, I've got the chain built up on one side while simultaneously working the stitches. It's not magic. So I've chained one and cut at the end, leaving a bit of a cha uh, tail sorry, to attach this top of the strap to the top of the back strap. So from here, I make a slip knot. So I'm going to rejoin my yarn into the last stitch on the body. So this is the stitch for the strap. This is the last stitch for the body. I'm going to join my yarn here. So on with the slip knot, pull it through, chain one to secure. And I'm going to work down with single crochet row because that's what I'm on next. That's the sequence. I've done the double crochet row with the strap. So I'm going to single crochet back down, but I'm also going to decrease into the first two stitches. So to do that, I'm going in through the very same stitch that I've just joined, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Then I'm going to put one stitch in each, all the way down. I'm going to come back with a double crochet row, and I'm going to stop two stitches short of the end, the new end that is, so I've just turn those last two stitches into one. I'm going to decrease a double crochet, decrease into the end. Back at the last two stitches, the double crochet row, I yarn over to prepare for the first double, insert my hook, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, then I go yarn over for the second stitch, in through the stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then pull through the last three and that forms a decrease to the double crochet row. From here I'm going to perform decreases at the start and the end of each row. So single crochet down, double crochet back up, decrease both at the top by the strap here until I get the width that I need. So the width that I need, I've just turned right side out so that I can explain. I'm going to measure all the way around the widest part of my body, my upper body, and I'm going to take a quarter of that measurement and from here, the centre of my monster panel out to where I work to needs to be one quarter of that measurement because I'm going to work this section over on the other side to match. So circumference of your body, the widest part, from the centre to the edge needs to measure one quarter of that measurement and keep decreasing and sloping down as you go. That's side number one finished. I've worked my 11 rows after the strap with 11 reductions and I've gone from 43 stitches, sorry, 44 stitches to 33. I've now got to do the same thing over on this side. And I start at this top corner, into the very top, top stitch, and with a slip knot, pull that through, chain one to secure. And I work a row of single crochet down the edge, two stitches in the middle of each double crochet stitch. I then work back up with double crochet, back down with single, and do everything exactly the same as I've done on this side. So I worked a single, a double, a single, a double, a single, and then back up with the double all the way to the top. Then I work back down with a single, reducing into the first two stitches, and then five pairs of single double with reductions at the top each time. I'm just going to work that whole thing over on this side. That's my completed front panel all the way across. It measures half the circumference of the widest part of my body. So now I've got to work on the back panel and I'm going to be starting from this side. So whereas before I worked out from the centre and worked decreases, I now have to work from this side so I have to start with increases. So the first thing I need to do is make a chain, the same number of stitches I had at this end. For me, that was 33. 
make a chain of 33. I have my chain of 33 and my single crochet rows work down top to bottom. And my first stitch therefore needs to be an increase. So I'm going to chain an extra one to turn. I'm going to turn my chain so I've got my back loop exposed. So skipping the first chain into the second, I'm going to make two single crochets. And that's my first increase. I'm going to work one single crochet into every back bump all the way down. I'll turn and work a double crochet all the way back up. Two stitches in the last stitch. Back up at the top and row two, double crochet row. Here's my last stitch. I'm going to put two it right into there. And there's the increase. So then I'll turn two single crochet into the top stitch, single crochet all the way down, double all the way back up, two in the last stitch. So I'll just work as many increases as I work decreases, then I work the strap. So that's the first side up to the strap. I worked to the top of the strap and then cut off and tied off there and I've reattached my yarn at the bottom of the strap. So now I'm at this point. If I want to make a loose fit, um, this obviously measures half my body circumference, so I'd make one exactly the same for the back panel. I'd work these four rows before my monster section, then I'd work the width of that, the other four rows on the other side, strap and then reductions. But what I'm actually going to do is I want a bit of a tighter fit, so I'm going to cut out these two rows here, well, two pairs of rows and these two pairs of rows here. So I could have obviously opted to opt take out one pair of rows here, one pair of rows here, and do the same on both sides. But to be blunt, I've got a lot more going on up front than I have on the back, so this is what I've opted to do. So it's going to be narrower in the back and a little bit wider in the front. So I'm going to just work the length or the width, should I say, of the monster panel. That's 33 stitches across. That equates to 11 pairs of rows. I'm going to start with a single crochet row down on the strap. So single row down here, 11 pairs of rows, end with a single straight up for the strap for me. And then I work the a decrease side, same as I did for the front panel. I've worked my entire back panel and I've actually joined down one side and I've joined the, the shoulder. So I'm going to show you how I did that on the other side. So as you can see, my back panel is significantly smaller than my front panel. And I realise it's a little unconventional, but that's what works for me. I realise that just the front often gets a little bit too stretched um, compared to the back. Or the back has to stretch around to the front to accommodate the front. So as I'm making my own clothes, I figured I'll just do what I want. And you can too, obviously, and just make them equal if that's what you prefer. So, what I'm going to do next is seam up from this side. So I've left my yarn attached. I'm just going to jostle myself into position and I'll be back. I'm all lined up for joining. I have the two good sides, or the outside sides, facing each other on the inside. So that I work my seam on the inside. So, yarn is where I left off. I'm just going to go in, I'll just move this tail end out so you can see what I'm doing. Bottom stitch on one side, the single crochet. Just into there. And I'll just move that again. Into the stitch on the other side. Pull through a loop. I'm just going to work my tail end in as I go. I'll just pop them down there. Yarn over and pull through for a single crochet. And I'm going to do that the whole way down. So in through one side on the stitch, in through the other side. And single crochet. So I'll work the same seam the whole way down at the top. I can chain one and cut. There's my finished seam. I'll just turn it right way out. And that's that. So for the shoulder straps, I've worked right side out and joined the two ends as though they were going to be worn. 
and then take a yarn needle and thread my tail end through. If you've cut your tail end too short, then just attach a fresh bit of yarn at the end. So right side out, this is how it's going to be worn. This is how it will sit on top of the shoulder. So I've just literally threaded the tail end on one end and I'm going to go in outside to inside on the stitch at the end of one side and then I'm going to come back around and inside to outside on the other side so it just joins in at the end there and I'm just going to thread my needle through down through this stitch to come out the other side so I'm through the center of the other stitch And, sorry, I just jostle myself into position. Same again on the other side. So in, I'm going back to front, around the stitch. Same on the other side, through both sides of the stitch. And just join like that. So then I can just tie off my yarn. I'm just going to poke it through and make a couple of little knots and then I can just weave in this end. So whilst I had my yarn needle all threaded I just weaved in my end there under the back. So that's what my straps look like on the top. Okay, at this point I'm just going to go around the bottom edge with a row of single crochet just to tidy this all up and whilst doing so I'm actually going to pull in and reduce my stitch count. If you don't need to reduce your stitch count, you've tried this on and it fits just fine, go around making one single crochet for every single crochet row and two for every double. Then just one stitch over each stitch across your tapestry section. What I'm actually going to do is one uh, sorry two for each double i'm going to skip the single crochet row so every time i come to a, a pair of rows i'm going to put two single crochets into the double crochet and then across here the tapestry section just to make sure that it's all even i'm going to work one on its own two and three together to make sure that i've got the same amount of reductions kind of reductions i suppose all the way around so i'm going to join it at my seam here in at the seam, on with a slip knot, and pull that through, chain up one, and I'm going to slip stitch back into that chain one when I've gone all the way around. So I'm going to go around in this direction. So starting with the first double crochet, which is here, I'm going to put two stitches. Sorry, that's a bit loose. Let me go back and redo. So one and two. Skip the single crochet row, next double, two in there. Skip the single, next double, two in there. And I'll work that way across to here. Here I am at the tapestry section. I'm going to work a single crochet on his own. And then one, two, together. One alone, one, and two, together. Work that way all the way across the front, the tapestry section. And then I'm back to two in each double all the way around. At the end, I'll try it on and make sure it's not too tight because obviously I've taken out the stretch for the bottom section. So I need to be able to get it on. All being well, chain up one and cut. I've worked all the way around with my single crochet row. I'm just going to slip stitch, as I mentioned, into the chain one that I worked at the start. And then I can chain one 
and for me I can cut my arm because I've already tried this method and I know that it works for me but do try it on at this point and make sure that you can get make sure you can get it on and if not just unravel that and add in some extra stitches so it doesn't alter it dramatically as you can see it just tightens it up a bit so it's not quite so loose and baggy at this point if you're going to leave as a vest I would go around again actually just to tidy that up I'd also go around the edge one stitch in each this time so three for your double crochet and single crochet rows so one in the single two in the double one across the front and then one in each all the way around and I'd do the same again for the outside as it is I'm going to go continue and turn this into a little sweater vest starting with the trim along the bottom for the trim I've gone back to the same color that I used for the little monster I'm going to work the bottom from the center so my center is roughly here I'm not going to go through both loops because I'm changing color I like to have that front rows contrast as I mentioned before I'm going to use the back loop and the little loop that's just next to it if you can see there's the back loop and I'm also going to go into this loop next to it, if it will let me. I know why it's been difficult. There we go. So that I've got two loops. So it's just to make sure I've got a good hold onto it. So on with my slip knot, pull through. And I'm not going to chain one to secure this time because that chain one's going to be my first stitch. So make sure it's not too tight. Chain one, and I'm going to chain seven in total. So that's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain number seven is my turning chain. So starting from the second loop from my hook, I'm going to work single crochet. And then I'm going to work five more so that I have six in total. And that's the length of the trim that I want at the bottom. Obviously, make it any length you want. Here at the bottom that's where I've joined so next stitch along again back loop and the one next to it I'm just going to poke through there and slip stitch and I'm going to go for the next one back loop and next one to it slip stitch again and then I'll turn around I'll work my way back up So I'll just get myself into position and work my way back up. So the last two, the first two stitches are the slip stitches that I've just worked. So the first actual stitch is this guy. I'm going to work the back loop of the single crochet. I don't know why I've yarned over first because that's not a single crochet. So let's just do that again. Single crochet into the back loop and into the back loops of each stitch along my trim section except for the last one because on the last one I'm going to go through both loops and I'm going to do that in each direction so when I get to the end I'll work the back loops I'll sorry both loops I'll chain one turning around again and I'll work both loops on the way back down and then back loops again for the remainder. When I get down to the bottom, I will again slip stitch twice into the base. Again, for me, I'm going back loops and the ones next to it. Not compulsory, you can just go into both loops. So I should have actually turned around, I'm now contorting myself. Persevere. Right, so I'll turn now and work my slip stitches. So I've got two, four, six stitches. Next stitch to slip stitch into is this guy. And the one next to it. Which I've clearly made too tight. I'm 
There we go. And slip stitch. Next one. Slip stitch. And then turn around. I'll come back. Back loops only for the first five. Both loops for number six. Chain one. Turn around. Both loops for number one. Back loops for the last five. Slip stitch twice into the base and do that up and down, up and down, all the way around and I'll be back to here. I've worked my trim, my bottom trim, all the way around the bottom. And I've got the last stitch to slip stitch into. I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the start as well, just to anchor that. Move my tail out of the way. I'm just going to go back up to the outer edge one more time. Here I am at the top. I'm going to pinch the two sides together so that I'm making my seam on the inside. Just got to get my yarn in the right position. So I have two loops from the row I've just worked, and I've got the remaining loop from the start chain. So in through that remaining loop on that side and in through, so I didn't chain one, let me go back, chain one and then pinch the two sides in through the remaining loop on the start side, in through the back loop on the side I've just worked and slip stitch. So again, in through the remaining loop, back loop on the row I've just worked, and pull through for a slip stitch. I'm just going to work my six stitches, and at the end I can chain one to secure my yarn and cut. There's my finished seam. This is what it looks like on the right side. Once you have that, Need to do it all again three more times. I've edged around the arm opening and the neck opening the single crochet. The only difference being that I worked the single crochet rows as well this time so I didn't miss out any stitches. Two single crochets on the side of the doubles, one single crochet on the side of the single rows all the way around and then I worked out a chain of five to work a trim of four stitches because the fifth chain being the turn chain. And the only other difference was that when I reached the part where strap meets body, I slip stitched three times instead of two. So three slip stitches here, 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 and here, back and front. So one quick tip with the tapestry crochet, if you can see too much of your other colour, the colour that you've um, trailed along the back, spread a little of your yarn onto your hook, needle, sorry, yarn needle, and just go through your stitches, feeding it through both loops of this front part of your stitch, all the way along, and just pull that through. And what that does then, it adds an extra layer of the blue which is covering up my aqua. It doesn't always show through much, but when you've got a really strong colour over a pale, behind a pale colour, you can sometimes see it a little bit, so that helps. And then I'll just thread this back through and tie it off at the back. Quite smug to announce that I've been weaving in my ends as I've gone along, so I've only got these two to go. So I'll go away and weave these in and then I'm all done. If you do all of that, you'll have yourself one of these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. A huge thank you to those who already have. And to everyone, thank you for watching today.